so your book is called um, Into the Abyss. Mm. And what what is the abyss? And is it, uh, I'm assuming, um, and I've read it, uh, the, the abyss of the human mind, as it were. Yeah, it, it's taken from a quotation from Carl Jaspers, who mm. was a psychiatrist and philosopher um, at the turn of the century, of the last century. And he really wrote a lot about, um, you know, what, what, what are the, uh, what's the essence of mental illness, particularly severe mental illness like psychosis. Mm. And he said that although it is incumbent upon us to try and understand the patient, uh, to empathize with them, quite often there's an impenetrable gap there's an abyss between our view of the world and reality and their view of the world and reality. Um, and he, he said this uh, not in a way to demean or, or to uh, put down the patient's experience, but just in a way his own feelings of inadequacy, uh, <laughs> trying to understand you know, very complicated and strange and unusual phenomena. But it is kind of a challenge. Yeah, uh, that, that I, I, I try to respond to that you can actually bridge that gap between, as it were, so-called insane and the sane, <laughs> or the people with severe problems and those of us at the moment who are lucky enough not to have them uh, or less of them. You know, there isn't such a difference when you really get down to it and work to try and understand uh, all the influences that bring about the person into your into your office or into the hospital. I mean, I think that's really uh, true on a um, for people that aren't clinicians. That you know, anytime there's like a some kind of school shooting or something like that, we we try to put ourselves in that person's mental space, and we're just and we can't. We're just like, how could this person do something like this? Um, it just seems impossible to to, yes. to, to, to and, and fathom that, that, what's going through that person's mind. And that's often the starting point. And it may be in the end, we don't manage to, to bridge that gap of understanding. Uh, but at least it's worth the effort. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I guess uh, what, what I try to bring out is this isn't just about being empathic and uh, listening uh, to the person's story and life story, although that's an essential component. Uh, you know, there's a lot of research out there into the social science of behavior as well as neuroscience, uh, and we can bring, try and bring all of that together to help us sort of bridge the gap. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's um, what you refer to in the book as the biopsychosocial model of medicine right um right. which which i'm somewhat familiar with um but maybe for the audience you could just briefly explain what that is and and how it helps you do what you do yeah well it, it is a it's a term that was coined by uh, a physician an american physician called george engel back in the 70s and i think one of his motivations was to say look um, understanding the person's disease is not really enough to be their physician. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet he also wanted to distance himself from um, psychoanalysis and Freudian kind of uh, models that were, were still very dominant uh, at the time, especially in the US. So it was about saying, look, we've got to understand the person's biology and physiology uh, but we've also un got to understand their social context, and we've also got to understand their un their own understanding, uh, their perceptions, their beliefs, um, and that neither of these has primacy. Uh, it is incumbent upon us to try and bring them all together. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we're still struggling with what exactly that entails. Because <laughs> in some ways it just sounds like, well, it's motherhood and apple pie, of course, yeah. Uh, all of that's important. Uh, but actually, I think since Engel, there's been a number of really quite deep philosophical and scientific explorations of what that actually means. Mm -hmm. How 
say, to give a simple example, how uh, physiological stress or emotional stress can produce changes in the immune system, which then can produce changes uh, in brain connectivity and development, uh, and it can set up a kind of circle uh, that you then see the world in a different way that might mean that you're more susceptible to stress. Yeah. So, you know, it's also about how the body and the mind connect as well. Right. Yeah. And I, and I think you can see that most clearly in like the placebo effects where, you know, that's it's actually a powerful thing where the mind is is having an effect on the body. But um, I guess we don't we yeah. don't we don't know. Um, I, and, you know, I, I think at some point you in the book, you express some frustration with with this model <laughs> in, in that it's sort of it's it's hard to understand those connections between the bio, the psycho and the social. Um, and it's kind of a, a, a theory that or a model that explains everything and nothing at the same time. I forget exactly how you put that, but it was yeah, something I, like well, that. that. That is one of the criticisms, but I, I, I think we've got to stick with it. Um, and try and see that it does explain, can explain specific things if we get the balance what right. If we can, in, in some instance, we, we might need to weight the biological contribution higher than the others, hmm. say where there is a demonstrable brain disease that sort of changed the person and changed their attitudes and behavior, um, whereas others other conditions seem much more a product of culture and prevailing beliefs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for example, one of the examples is of um, you know eating disorders. So clearly, uh, appetite uh, is you know hugely controlled by biological mechanisms. You know, you know, no organisms can survive without taking in energy and so on, um, and yet the way people see their body and their body shape uh, that's so influenced by cultural messages and prevailing um, views of beauty and health mm -hmm. uh, so there you have it right there you know the biology and the social colliding to some extent so, the person so in the middle so so that would that would suggest that like uh, anorexia might look different in, in one country, for example, versus another based on sort of cultural standards. Yeah, yes, and, and yeah, the way, the way it sort of comes about, the differences in prevalence across different cultures, uh, yeah. it, it, it's a good example of that. 